Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Another candidate. <laughs> Yet another candidate has dropped out of the Democratic race, and we're getting a clearer picture of America's future, and it looks a lot like America's past. <laughs> and I'll give you the latest in tonight's edition of... I have a plan for that. I beat Trump. Corn Pop was a bad dude. <laughs> Bing, bing, bong, bong. Yuri Road to the White House 2020. Come on! Now. <laughs> folks, I'm afraid I have sad news for fans of competence because <laughs> friend of the show, Elizabeth Warren, has dropped out of the presidential race. The, the one time front runner, Warren, made the classic campaign mistake of being able to finish a coherent sentence <laughs> and not having a penis. <laughs> Warren is gone now. That's it. She's out of the race. Further proof that America cannot have nice things. <laughs> she had a plan for everything. A health care plan, an immigration plan, a student loan plan, and her most popular plan of all, kneecapping Michael Bloomberg with a croquet mallet. <laughs> oh, no. Uh -oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> Hold still. Taka. Not surprisingly, Warren was gracious and eloquent, reportedly telling her staff, I will carry you in my heart for the rest of my life. If I leave you with one piece of advice, choose to fight only righteous fights. That is beautiful. But fear not. It is. It's really lovely. Yeah. But fear not, Warren fans. Joe Biden is sure to continue that fight with his righteous message of... Yabba dabba Democrats, lifelong. <laughs> mama say, mama sa, mama kusa. Come on. <laughs> now, you really got to get the flip downs. When she addressed the press, Warren lamented how the narrative of this primary seemed to have been written in advance. I was told at the beginning of this whole undertaking that there are two lanes a progressive lane that Bernie Sanders is the incumbent for and a moderate lane that Joe Biden is the incumbent for. And there's no room for anyone else in this. I thought that wasn't right, but evidently I was wrong. Yes, despite her best effort, that Democratic road still has just two lanes and two drivers who probably should have their keys taken away. <laughs> okay? Eyes are just going. Now, get a golf cart. Get a golf cart. At one point, Warren was asked about the young women and girls who look up to her. I wonder what your message would be to the women and girls who feel like we're left with two white men to decide between. I know. One of the hardest parts of this is all those picky promises and all those little girls who are going to have to wait four more years. Are you happy, America? You made Elizabeth Warren break her pinky promise. <laughs> now she has to hope to die and stick a needle in her eye. Warren was also asked whether sexism might have played a role in her campaign's ending. Gender in this race, you know, that is the trap question for every woman. Uh, if you say, yeah, there was sexism in this race, everyone says, whiner. And if you say, no, there was no sexism, about a bazillion women think, what planet do you live on? Um, I promise you this, I'll have a lot more to say on that subject later on. And I'm guessing most of it will be bleeped. <laughs> then, then Warren was asked whether she would be endorsing either Biden or Sanders. Here's what she said. Let's take a deep breath and spend a little time on that. We don't have to decide that this minute. Okay, she's right. Let's all just take a deep breath and hold it until the coronavirus is gone. <laughs> Now, you know there's going to be a fierce battle between Biden and Sanders to win Elizabeth Warren. Liz, I'm sorry I called you a liar, please. My heart can't take much more of this. That's doctor's orders. I guess what I'm saying is you complete me, literally. I need an organ donor. In your eyes, the light, the heat, your eyes. But Biden... Biden's not giving up without a fight. 
Don't listen to him, Lizzie. After all, you are my cousin. Oh, wait, you switched on me. Point is, I want you to endorse me for U.S. Senate. No, I mean that, folks. <laughs> and as they waited for Warren's announcement, the press camped out on her lawn, and one reporter snapped this picture of her dog, Bailey. Oh, look at that face. Dang, that should have been her campaign slogan all along. <laughs> Vote for Elizabeth Warren or you'll make a dog sad. But, but, like a lot of us, Bailey evidently is a stress eater because after the announcement, Warren's press secretary, Gabrielle Farrell, posted on Twitter, Bailey legit just swiped someone's burrito. <laughs> Along with footage of staffers trying to get the Tex-Mex from <laughs> his mom. Yes, yes, it's your burrito, but Bailey has a plan for that. So, ladies and gentlemen, a master plan. now it is time. We're all Bailey. Today, come on, give me that. Today, we are all Bailey. So it's time to say goodbye to Elizabeth Warren. Oh, here comes her horse. Ride, Lizzie. Ride. Ride. <laughs> So now it's down to Biden and Sanders. Showdown at high noon, right before they both eat dinner. <laughs> Either one of these men would be the oldest president in U.S. history, so it's going to be important they choose a running mate that is experienced, yet seems a lot younger, so Jimmy Carter. <laughs> now, the other big story... Strom Thurmond? No, Strom Thurmond's gone. <laughs> okay. The other big story is still the coronavirus. It's all anybody's talking about. You could say, America has coronavirus fever, but you should not. That would be in poor taste. <laughs> How dare you? And I'll give you the latest in tonight's Going Viral. Lick me. I'm delicious. Yep. Coronavirus continues to spread. So far, there have been 210 confirmed cases in 18 states with double-digit fatalities. So last night, Donald Trump went on Fox News to lie about everything. <laughs> Specifically, he lied about the most recent World Health Organization estimate that the global death rate of coronavirus is 3.4%. He disagreed. I think the 3.4% is really a false number. Now, this is just my hunch. Science is not based on hunches. <laughs> That's why Bill Nye the Science Guy is more successful than his rival, Phil Munch, Man of Hunch. <laughs> Now, Trump, it's a good show, though. It's a really good show. So much. Trump backed up his fake hunch with some fake math. It seems like uh, 3 or 4%, which is a very high number, as opposed, to, as opposed to a fraction of 1%. I think the number, personally, I would say the number is way under 1%. This isn't the art of the deal. You can't negotiate with science. <laughs> You're saying I have six to eight weeks to live? Uh-huh, okay. How about 10 to 12, all right? <laughs> Nine weeks, final offer, or I'm walking. Oh, you're saying I won't be able to walk then? Okay. <laughs> now, Trump didn't just have bad numbers. He also had some bad advice. A lot of people will have this, and it's very mild. Uh, they'll get better very rapidly. They don't even see a doctor. They don't even call a doctor. You never hear about those people. We have thousands or hundreds of thousands of people that get better just by... You know, sitting around and even going to work. Some of them go to work. Go to work. Maybe some of them do go to work, but they shouldn't go to work. Because that's a good way to spread a pandemic. Trump's like the mayor in Jaws, but worse. Don't listen to the sheriff, okay? Sheriff doesn't know what he's talking about. The beaches are open for summer. A lot of people, a lot of people are going to get attacked by a shark. But a lot of people aren't. Never here. <laughs> about the hundreds of thousands of people who don't get chomped up. Some of them will get their leg eaten off, but they'll come to shore and they'll get better just by sitting around. Their legs will grow back, I have a hunch. But, you see, it's a message what? of hope, John. Hope, message never, of hope? Really? Message never of hope? Die. Really? But maybe the worst corona lie was what Trump said about the current fatalities. When you do have a death, like you've had in the state of Washington, like you had one in California, I believe you had one in New York. No, we did not have one in New York. 
But he said it. Now an intern in the Trump administration is going to have to make it true. <laughs> I'm so sorry. He said it on hand and he stay still. <laughs> it's for college credit. Hold still. <laughs> it's not a real gun. It's not a real gun. <laughs> These are anxious times demanding swift, decisive action. And for once, Congress has stepped up because first the House, then today the Senate, both passed an $8.3 billion emergency spending package to respond to the coronavirus outbreak. Dang! Mm. With that kind of money, you could go on Amazon and buy six face masks. <laughs> There's some Americans. <laughs> yes? There you go. It's the second time, it second time. You got to go the second yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Some Republicans think that $8.3 billion is an overreaction, like Florida congressman and man thinking, you can't arrest me for drunk driving. I'm Florida congressman Matt Gates. Yeah. Matt Gates. <laughs> Gates was there for yesterday's budget vote, and he showed up for it wearing a gas mask. <laughs> well, that is one way to prevent people from smelling the liquor on your breath. <laughs> and then... And then, that wasn't Gates's only picture wearing the gas mask. Here he is, surrounded by all of his friends. <laughs> and I'd like to point out, I'd like to point out, ladies and gentlemen, that he is the only man who could wear a gas mask to work and still have the dumbest part of his outfit be his shoes. <laughs> it's like, they're like clown feet, but they didn't grow. They're... One person actually taking the coronavirus seriously is Bond. James Bond. <laughs> Yesterday, the new James Bond movie was postponed over coronavirus fears. Turns out that when the producers of the film heard about the coronavirus, they were shaken and stirred. <laughs> Ironically, the film is named No Time to Die. It didn't help that the Bond girl's named Pamdemic. <laughs> I applaud the producers for putting public health ahead of their marketing schedule, but I think they can do more. That's why I'm calling on them to release a new version of one of their classic songs. Wash fingers! <laughs> Seriously, wash your fingers. We got a great show for you tonight. Keith Urban is here. But when we 